Let's take a close look at the friction in the piping. In order to do so, we again evaluate the pipe section with valve through which water is flowing. We have introduced the basic pressure dynamics associated with water hammer. But so far we have neglected the friction between the medium and the pipe inner wall surface. Let's now take a closer look at this friction. The pipe is connected to a full reservoir upstream and an empty reservoir downstream, which we assume to be infinite in size, such that the pressure at the inlet can be considered constant. Again, we focus on the upstream section. Again, we see the pipe section with the valve, which is open. The water flows from left to right with a velocity V0, and the pressure is constant at the inlet. We visualize the pressure P as a function of the pipe length X. If we neglect friction, this pressure profile shows a straight line for steady state operation. Closure of the valve results in pressure peaks as we've seen before, and the associated pressure waves move back and forth between the reservoir and the closed valve. So let's take a closer look at what happens if the friction between the medium and the pipe wall is considered. To do so we go back to the initial situation, with the valve open and the previously shown pressure profile. Now we will factor in the friction forces, which work in the direction opposite to the flow. The flow through the pipe now has to overcome the friction, which results in a loss of pressure. As a result, the pressure reduces over the length of the pipe, which results in a pressure profile with a slight angle. The further the water has flowed through the pipe, the more friction it has overcome and hence the lower the pressure has become. Now we will include the friction for the valve closure scenario. We again review the pressure right upstream of the valve with a plot of the pressure versus time. The plot shows the pressure peaks and drops as discussed before. As a result of friction in the system, energy is lost from the pressure waves, which results in a reduction of the height of the pressure peak. The peaks and the drops in the plot are now dampened back to equilibrium value. Note that for flexible systems, like a fire hose, this dampening can happen within the first one or two waves since energy is quickly lost because of the deformation of the hose. So friction causes dampening of the pressure peaks in water hammer, but it causes an additional effect called line packing. We go back to our first dampened plot to introduce the concept of line packing. The wavefront of the pressure peak that is created after closing the valve forms the boundary between flowing water on the left and water that has already come to a halt on the right. Now the original height of the pressure peak was based on the presence of friction, so pressure losses, in the entire line. But as the wave moves through the system, the flow is stopped and hence the amount of friction is reduced. As a result, the pressure losses due to friction are reduced as well. This causes the pressure at the location under consideration to increase somewhat as the wave passes through the pipe. The top of our pressure peak is now under a slight angle instead of horizontal. This effect holds for all peaks in the plot, both the high pressure values as the low ones. So instead of flat lines for our peaks, line packing causes a slight angle. We've now seen the influence of friction to water hammer. First of all, there's the dampening of the pressure peaks, and second of all, there's the phenomena called line packing. 